Hello there, how is it going? Welcome to the video series on React Chase. React Chase is used for building user interfaces, especially for web applications. This is the first video of the series, and in this particular video, we will talk about what are components in React Chase. Let's first understand why I am targeting components first. Whenever you create any React app, it uses a library called React DOM. React DOM is a library which is an interface between React and the DOM and it is using a special function called render and this render function actually renders all the React components and that's the reason we will try to understand React component first before moving further. So as we have understood that React components are the building block of React UI. So whenever we think about a UI or user interface a two-dimensional space comes into our mind and in this two-dimensional space we'll have various things. For example, in this particular picture we will have something on the top, something on the left, something on the right side. Not only that, some of these UI elements can itself contain other UI elements inside it. Remember there will be multiple buttons when you submit a form, there will be multiple options to select from. So these all things mix up a UI and React UI is not different. The only thing which we need to remember is that all those things, whether it is external or internal to a particular component are React components, which means that everything that is displayed on the screen is a component, whether it is within inside a component or standalone component, everything in React is a component, which means that each component decide how it will be rendered onto the screen. That means each component has a function called render. That's the bare minimum function. Without it, there is no React component. Each and every React component will have a bare minimum render function. Now, React component can be created in two ways. One type of creation is called class component. Another type of creation is called functional component. Irrespective of their differences, both needs a render function because render function determines how the component will be rendered onto the screen. Now, what are the difference between these two type of component? So class components are actually stateful. They maintain the state within themselves. And while functional components are stateless, they don't maintain any state, which effectively means that stateful class components are dynamic in nature and it can redraw itself as and when required. And this redrawing itself can be done by using a special function called setState. I'll create a separate tutorial on how to use setState. Coming back to the functional component, since it is stateless, we cannot redraw itself. It's static in nature, which means that once it is drawn, it will remain same during its lifetime. We can create multiple instances of functional component with different different values, but once it is drawn onto the screen, it cannot be changed. So in a sense, it's kind of const rendering, okay? So let's see how a stateful class component is written. This is a very simple code of a stateful class component. Let's understand what does it means. So what we are doing right now is that we are importing the library React from React and render from React Tom. Remember, it's the React Tom dot render function in the last line you can see that is responsible for rendering the component onto the UI. Class components are created using JavaScript ES6 class syntax. So I say class my app extends React dot component and bare minimum it has to have a function called render. And in this particular render function, I am returning hello React. That's all. And the React Tom render function is rendering my app into the root element of the DOM. This is a JSX syntax. Okay. So this is the way we create a class component. It is stateful. We will see into the state related aspects in some another video. Okay. Right now we are just trying to understand how to create a class component. Now coming back to the functional component. A functional component can be created in this particular way as depicted in here. So what we are trying to do over here is that instead of creating a class, we are creating a functional component using the arrow function of ES6 JavaScript. What we are doing that we are creating a my app using a arrow function. We are just returning hello react. The output of this will be similar to what we had with the class component but it is very concise in nature and it's simpler to write if you do not want to maintain any state. 
okay the react term render function doesn't differentiate between class component and functional component the syntax of react term render remains same okay so that's the way we create a functional component now let's go and see these react components in action by creating them and seeing the output however i'll not be using a setup in my own laptop i'll be using an online ide so let's go ahead and see the code so here is the online IDE which I intend to use stack blitz. Just a disclaimer, I am nowhere associated with this particular IDE or the creators of this IDE. It just that I liked it because I am very much used to Visual Studio code and you can use Angular, React, many other things over here. And there are other similar options available too. So I'll create a React application. I'll click on React. So what it will do is that it will give me an inbuilt setup where everything will be working state. So if I just go ahead and change, uh, it will be just reflected over here. This also gives me a URL which I can use in any other browser. So in that sense, it's pretty awesome to use these things and all the setup is there. If there are some dependencies that are missing, we can actually install that too. So let's use it. Okay. So let me increase the area and I'll get rid of everything. Right. So let me first create a class component. So I said I'll create a class app which extends from react.component and I say that it needs to have at least one function and that function name is render and that render has to return JSX. So in here what I will do is that I'll return h1 tag saying that hello react. And you can see that hello react is being displayed over here. There is an option of uh, hot reload. If you disable this option, you have to refresh the page. If hot reload is there, it will be reloading automatically every time you change the code. And I found this option to be really useful. Okay, so this is the way I create my class component. And if I want to create my functional component, I'll create the component as uh, const my app. This is the ES6 arrow function syntax. And in here, I'll do, I'll use the same return. I'll say h1, hello react from functional, I said slash h1, it has to be app. And you can see that hello react from functional is displayed over here. So that's all about this particular video and I just wanted to give you a hands on on how to create class component and functional component. We will see more into these things in later videos. Till then have a nice day. Goodbye. Good luck. Good learning. Please, please, please take a moment to like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you. Thanks a lot.